Right then, so generally, setup wise for me, looking a lot better. Stuff obviously you've been through now in the last sort of few sessions, so you get the lines there nicer there. Your left hand grip so much better. Just your general sort of spine angle, your posture, all very, very good now, okay? The issue we've got now in terms of the swing is that club goes back, that right knee's before that club's even got above knee height, you yeah. see your right knee kind of moving back. Now, what that will cause now is a sort of limited shoulder and hip turn, and you get kind of stuck on that left side as you go here. Now, from here, because you can't really then shift your weight because you're kind of over the ball too much, your left knee now has to kind of straighten, and that then causes you to sort of, sort of kind of start popping up and back here. So your head's now sort of moving a little yeah. bit this way it's through impact. It'll pop yeah. up there. And that can cause the old pull hooks left or just not able to control that club face, okay? So there's kind of your back swing. What we want to try and do is practice this sort of first part of the takeaway where you just sort of swing here, here. Yeah. So your shoulders are moving there, okay? And the lower half, it will move a little bit, but that's fine, okay? And just start making these kind of movements now where you're quieting the lower half down, okay? Quieting it down. There you go. Because now you're using your top half and your torso, you can see there now you're getting nicely behind the golf ball. Okay, so you're getting your head and staying behind there. Rather, look at the shadow. It's a different kind of position on the mat there, but your yeah. shadow now is sort of kind of here, whereas this one now you can see a bit of lean there with your spine, getting a better shoulder turn and moving behind the ball. Then as you go back a bit further again, good turn on the golf ball there. And then we set to the golf ball. Now again from here, just do a golf swing. Okay, so the club then goes back. Top half taking it away. Your shoulders now, look at that turn there now. Okay, yeah. so your lower half has worked, but you've got behind the golf ball, okay? And that's where you need your lower half to be, so your top half to be. So now your hip can drive towards target. When you're stuck on this side here, if you're here in that position, now drive your hip. It's going to pop out. Yeah. If you're kind of back here, now drive, you, can, you can push against that lower half. So, as I said, the lower half needs to move. We want the lower half to turn, so you might look at that more leg movement, okay? But how it's got there and how your body's able to turn and get behind the ball here, you're able to get the lower half now. So from that wall position we discussed in the past, your hip can now move into that wall there, so you're shifting your weight. Head now is nicely behind the golf ball. Hands are slightly in front there, as you can see. Yeah. So there's impact. With a different kind of line for your spine. There's your head. Good. And we can twist through into a nice kind of balanced position up on the left side. Very, very good position. And again, this foot, as we said, moved nicely when that orange ball went underneath the foot there. He didn't move at all, did he? But it's interesting when you people do that. They put the foot on that ball <laughs> and it just fixates down. I'm going to stay there. I'm not going to move at all, okay? But that would be a good practice for doing the sort of short 30, 40, maybe your warm-up swings. Maybe about 10 or 15 shots on here on the range where you go to. Put that ball underneath your right heel okay so obviously your right knee then is going to be sort of just up a little bit that will stop the leg kicking back too much okay the lower half does need to move like i say but how it moves and what moves it is a key thing if we stand there and we trigger the backswing kind of by doing this with the leg yeah, yeah. this knee goes forward which actually perceived to give more gap between your legs yeah if i do this i'm now stuck on my left side and got a bit of gap here, as you are on this one here if i do this Okay, this gap now seems narrower, but I'm actually now behind the goal, so I'm able to move this way. The weight's not on my left foot sort of locked. I can actually move my lower half to impact, stay behind it. If I do this, now and that hurts my knee doing like I'm doing. Okay, you get stuck on that left side, you've got to come whoop, and find some space. And that popping up, if, <laughs> if you time it well, it's a great shot. Yeah. If you don't... <laughs> The better you get at playing golf, the better that shot will be, but it's still going to be extreme, isn't it? You either hit the ball, like, especially the driver, the distance you'll be hit, you either go really, really well or mm, not quite so good. So I think in terms of that practice at home again or even on the range, just make some swings here where you feel kind of just your chest, your shoulders and your torso taking that club away. Yes, the knees are going to move, okay? Initially, they're the first part of the swing. They're not going to move that much, if at all. If you're doing a small little chip shot there, David, you wouldn't be going... And doing that with you. your knee wouldn't sort yeah. of kick back here. Even putting. I mean, when was the last time you saw a good putter do this? And that's almost in a sense when your club goes back, what's triggering the swing, isn't it? I think when you're putting, you sort of say very still, just moving your torso, yeah? Not yeah. locking your legs, they can't move, but they're just sort of there, just... <coughs> this is the move we're making. It's not kind of... Whoop, no, I get doing it. That, yeah? Makes sense. Yeah? So yeah, we just yeah. get that lower... Because, again, the taller we are as well, if the lower half's not supporting the swing... <laughs> have to make any sort of connection so. so really i just want to get into this habit of going back like this yeah the ball yeah yeah and just 
what a lot of people often do is if you watch the Ryder Cup have what we call like a pre waggle or a pre kind of movement, Justin Thomas is very sort of famous for it, okay? He sort of sets the golf ball, he'd be here and then do this. Yeah? yeah. Definitely. Well, just, just to, so if you're doing that there now, what you would do is bring the club back down to the golf ball here now. All you would do is keep this fairly quiet here now. You just go to there, nice and loose there. Just that movement there. Again, do it nice and slow. And almost try and feel the movement that your body's making when you do that. And back, yeah? And then come back to the golf ball. That's it. I only do it once, maybe, maybe, maybe twice at most, but I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't dwell on it because then you'd be there going, like, am I doing it right? Then you're overthinking it again. It needs to be... <coughs> Justin Thomas doesn't think about his kind of no, waggle there. He just does it. I mean, Mike yeah. Weir was famous. But he, Mike Weir would sort of go, one, and then do that. That was his unity thing. But again, having a routine that's set in so you do the same over and over again is going to be the key thing there, David. Okay? It's almost like you, yeah. your arms go backwards. Yeah. When you feel the lift. Yeah. When you that's when you kind of... Yeah, exactly, what yeah. So. I'm doing is as soon as I go back... Yeah, you're like, whoop. <laughs> Exactly. You're you're using the lower half to trigger the backswing, yeah? yeah. That's the problem. Okay, mate. I'm quite pro